Hello, welcome to Literary Life. So I'm gonna be sharing with you the books I'm going to be reading in July. And I, you know, every month I'm pretty excited to read, but I'm looking at these like, this is gonna be a kick-ass month. <laughs> these are some really great books. So I am just, I'm, I, I cannot wait to dive in and I'm really hoping with some downtime, I can actually get through all of them easily. Um, Cause yeah. <laughs> there's a lot there's still a lot on my shelf and a lot coming with all my book boxes but let's get started so I'm gonna organize these by genre because I think they'll be a little bit um, helpful to kind of yeah just organizing is good right we all love it or most of us okay so let's start with fiction so the first um, three I'm gonna tackle are in my capsule books for June um so you may have seen these already so gods without men by Harry Kunzru Kunzru um, it's essentially about a couple who are out um, in a desert, I feel like. Yeah, California desert. And um, their son vanishes. And it's the Mojave Desert. And there's like this kind of mystical element to it where their son basically comes back unharmed, but he has changed. And the family in the town, it, so it sounds like they're kind of haunted. Like there's this spiritual element in the desert that essentially has um, characters that come into play into the book and meet the people that are from the past and the present. Um, and sort of, it, it's, it's essentially called um, a heartful exploration of the search for meaning in a chaotic universe. Um, but it sounds so, not but, I mean, and, it just sounds so fascinating um, when you read the description. So I'm really looking forward to this, this book um, first. The second part of um, my capsule was Back Talk by Danielle Lazarin. Um, so this is essentially a collection of stories about women's unexpressed desires and needs and the unexpected ways they resurface. Um, so I think it'll give a good little break up because um, it, you know, it's a collection of story, uh, stories it's thin. So I am remaining optimistic. I will speed through that one. And the third part of my capsule, another very thin book, is about an older woman who is about 75-ish, and she's essentially lived a very full life and been very independent and then has a fall that kind of takes her independence from her. And she's kind of struggling with that, having to rely on family and friends. Um, but in doing so, she is um, uh, uncovering stories of her past. And it sounds like it's really fascinating as you see what she's experienced in her life and the characters that come in um, through her stories. And I forgot one of the best parts, and that's the title of this book. It is Like a Mule Bringing Ice Cream to the Sun. There you have it. Will you ever see a title quite like that? I love it. So those are the first three. I've got two more I'm going to tackle in fiction. Um, so Divide Me by Zero. It's kind of interesting because there is a lot of this sort of woman, you know, kind of, I don't know, like exploring something um, in a handful of these books. It varies a little bit. But this book essentially is um, Katya Geller. Um, her mother is a mathematician, and essentially her mother has raised her to believe that math solves everything, that we can find the meaning to everything in math. Um, but her mom's dying, and it sounds like she's really struggling with that. And she's essentially going through her mother's unfinished notes for her last textbook, and she's trying to find meaning to help her cope with her grieving. And in doing so, though, she's, she's actually learning quite a bit about her mom and um, things she was not aware of. And um, she was also um, grew up in Soviet Russia and immigrated to the United States. So that experience um, of that immigration and essentially how that plays into identity um, unfolds as well. So this one sounded really good. Divide Me by Zero by Lara Vatner. Hopefully I said that right. The last fiction book, The Year Marjorie Moore Learned to Live, by Christy Gratham, Gratheim. Okay, so this book is another one. This sounds so funny. And again, it's thin, so I'm, I'm optimistic I'm gonna get through these all. So Marjorie Moore, she's always wanted more, okay, out of her life. Um, so she's always like hungry, searching, wanting, unhappy, restless. And essentially she feels trapped. So she escapes through shopping, pill popping, and fantasizing about a possible affair with a friend from high school. She gets caught up in a lot of credit card debt um, from this lifestyle that forces, <laughs> it's quotes, her to sell prescription drugs to her friends. Um, so essentially she's got like, she's just created this world of lies that's gonna unravel and really force her to um, have to 
either just fall apart or change. Um, so it sounds like there's a lot of good humor in this book as well. Um, also with, you know, woven into struggle. So I think that is really, it, it sounds really fun. All right, let's stay with fiction. I have one science fiction one, and I feel like I see a lot of people talking about this in Recursion by Blake Crouch. He wrote Dark Matter, and I absolutely love that book. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. So this one is essentially about um, technologies created where we can save our memories. Uh, but there's like this thing going on where those memories are being rewritten and it's driving people crazy because all of a sudden I have memories of having lived a life that I actually haven't. And that's very confusing, right? And so it's creating a lot of conflict. Um, and it's, so it's about that. <laughs> Doesn't that sound really good? And it's called fa False Memory Syndrome and the impact of that on um, us as humans. So I'm totally, totally looking forward to uh, Recursion by Blake Crouch. Um, let's go into mystery. I have one mystery, um, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. So um, I actually bought this one. It, just a quick side note, you guys, one of my favorite book subscriptions, Page One Books, opened up and I went to the grand opening and thank God they are an hour away so I can only maybe get out there once a month but um, I'm so excited because their bookstore is as cool as their subscription it's essentially you go in and you know it's like I got into their storeroom I'm gonna there's like all the good books they don't just have every book they have only the good books so anyway <laughs> I told myself walking in you will buy two and this is one of the two I bought. And Educated, which I'll get to in a minute, is the other one. <laughs> but I'm going to allow myself one trip a month and I can buy two. <laughs> That's the plan. We'll see if I, if I can hold. Um, so I got this there. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle is essentially about a woman who is murdered. And to investigate those murders, the investigator um, goes into the bodies of each of the people that were present, so essentially the suspects at the time, and relives the day through um, that suspect. And if he can't stop the death from happening, he, the day starts over and he's in another person's body. So it's kind of like this fun, like, sci-fi mystery kind of woven in. Um, so yeah, I'm really, I'm, I'm excited. I had seen they gave this um, in a couple subscriptions that people shared on Instagram, their unboxings, and it caught my attention. So that's why I grabbed it. Um, so it's by Stuart Turton, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. All right, let's go into the fantasy genre. I actually have two. So if you saw my book reviews for the early part of June, you saw I read the first of a trilogy by Brent Weeks. This is the second, and I'm going to read the final one, the third, in this series next month. I loved, and I rarely say that with fantasy, I loved the series. And my husband swears his second series, which actually is a book of five, um, is even better. And I'm like, I just, I, 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 yeah. So I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to reading this one. So essentially, the, the it's based on assassins, and the world is such that children kind of grow up, and these um, they have their little mob group. And uh, they have to fight for their survival, and they have their territories, and they do what they need to do. Um, but our main character has broken out and was mentored by an assassin that are called, I think, like the best of the best assassins. They're called like wetbacks or something like that. But um, so the first book kind of co uh, covered his moving into that new world and going through his training and some stuff going on between him and his mentor. And I don't want to give anything away in case you decide to read it, but this will continue the saga. We'll just leave it at that. But what I loved about Brent Week's writing, in case you didn't see my book review, was it's, it's really funny and it's very smart. He actually, like, just reading about, like, how the assassins operate and the, the fact that they'll take years to make a death look like a suicide. Like, I was just blown away by the nuanced process that the author had come up with or that the poisoning, the details behind the poisoning. I was, it was so impressed. I was just so impressed. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the second one that's called Shadow's Edge in the trilogy. So the second um, fantasy novel is another second book in a trilogy um, that I had read. The original one is called The Mechanicals by Ian Tregellis. And actually, I believe just talked about The Mechanicals in one of my literary journey videos. Um, but it's, it's about these robots, um, and it's sort of a combination of um, IT and alchemy that are created to, um, they have a certain role, they could be like the medical field or servant, so less intelligence um, required versus more intelligence required. 
um, depending on their role, but they're inherently built to follow commands. And they actually experience um, pain, uh, discomfort, severe discomfort, if they're issued a command that they don't follow. I think it's called like their gi or something goes off. But anyway, in the first book, there is a group of these um, that sort of uh, free themselves and remove parts of themselves to go rogue. And it's about that kind of rebellion and that free will. And this is the second called The Rising. So I'm really, I, I read The Mechanicals too so long ago and these have just been sitting on my shelf. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get on um, the ball with this one. And my husband's actually listening, starting the trilogy on Audible. So I'll have someone to talk to. Again. <laughs> That'll actually sit there and talk to me about books. We'll see how long you last. <laughs> All right, three more books, guys. You think I'm going a little over for it? We'll see. So these are nonfiction. Okay, so now we're going to go into some nonfiction books. So I talked about Educated already, so let's pull that one first. Um, so Educated, if you have not heard of this one, it seems like it's all over the place right now, is a memoir written by a, written, written by a woman who um, grew up in a survivalist camp in Idaho, who um, essentially the philosophy of that survivalist group was um, no education, no medical care. They really keep to themselves. And um, something basically triggers her breaking free from that and she sets her um, sights, she actually steps into a classroom like I think it's, it's 17 for the first time. So she enters a whole different world and this book is about that experience and redefining who she is and um, essentially becoming um, the per not just the woman who wrote this book but her love of education. I think she has now like multiple degrees and um, has, has just, it, it's mind blowing when you see what she's achieved. Um, and I find it really inspiring, quite frankly. So I'm really excited to read this book and I'm so curious about her, um, just her history and her perspectives. Um, and that one of the very, this is one of the very reasons I love reading. Um, so the next book, um, I've actually, another one I've been, I've had for a while that I've wanted to read. The Most Beautiful Walk in the World is set in Paris and it essentially is a memoir written by a man who gives walking tours um, for a year in Paris. He's lived there for years, he loves Paris, and his walking tours are, tours are literary focused. So it's about like the authors that have um, frequented the establishments um, as you go through Paris. So it's just such a beautiful blend for me of bookish and um, in another country. So like what, what more could you ask for? Um, so I'm really excited to finally, finally get my hand on that one. The last book was actually a book my mom had read, and she's passing to me, and then my sister is, um, will get it next, that um, she just loved. And when she sent it to me, I had not heard of the book, by Mary Pfeiffer, Women Rowing North, Navigating Life's Currents and Flourishing as We Age. But what surprised me, and I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it now, because I have like a good camera. She is the author of Reviving Ophelia, which I actually have and read when I had my daughter and I was raising her, because she's like 18 now, so that part's kind of done. Um, but she, it, it, I was, I loved it. So I, when I saw that, I'm like, oh my God, I absolutely loved Reviving Ophelia. So I'm so excited to tear this one up metaphorically. And by that, I mean, knock it out quickly because it's so thin. So here's another one I'm hoping, hence why so many, I've got several thin ones. Um, but it's just about women's experience with aging. Um, and what's interesting, though, is she's drawing on the author, her own experience as a daughter, sister, mother, grandmother, caregiver, clinical psychologist, and cultural anthropologist. So having all of those vantage points coming into it, I'm just I'm really looking forward to, um, again, what I can learn from this is because, you know, I'm, I'm also aging. It's happening. And it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's an interesting experience. So um, anything I can um, glean... <laughs> from this book will be well appreciated. <laughs> so that is it, guys. That is July. Doesn't it sound, I just almost knocked over, like you felt just the weight of moving that the books shook the whole desk. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm gonna remain optimistic. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. So let's do it. Let's go read a book. And you have a great day. Happy reading. Until the next. And take care. I had to literally move everything so I could get to the mouse. I buried the mouse. <laughs> All right, take care.